everyone. I am in Lexington, Missouri, and this is the site of the Lexington battle that happened in Missouri, Civil War battle. But I also wanted to show you a couple things here, not go into details on the battle or the significance of that, but just a few things in the downtown area that I found fascinating. So it really is a neat little downtown area, and they have this Veterans Memorial for Lafayette County and it is really well done. You can see here they've got some depictions of Army and then they have some depictions of the Navy and depictions of the Air Force. I like the way that they have all of the different time periods and here are the Marines. And then they also have the Coast Guard right here. Pretty interesting. They have dedicated this to the National Guard, the Reserve, civilian workers, everything. All these people that have served here. And then they have some flags there and an eagle on top. They even have a tribute to the Merchant Marines of World War II. Definitely something that was needed. There's not many places that go all, this all out for a memorial, but they definitely have. So I thought we would walk up through here. And let me show you what I'm wanting to show you. I had a viewer tip me off on what was located here and since I was in the area filming Robert Ford and his brother Charlie this wasn't really too far from there so I thought I would check it out love this old cannon here there's a Lexington Battle Visitors Center that's over there I swung by there and it wasn't open so like I said we won't be going into any big details of anything that happened but isn't that interesting? I always like to look in those things just to see if they're still loaded. And I say that because I have a friend in Oklahoma City that was looking in one that's in a cemetery. Found out it was, still had cannonballs in it. So they had to disarm it. Let's see what this says. Wentworth Alumni Memorial, Spirit of the American Doughboy. Pretty interesting. Look at it. He looks like he's uh, coming out of the trenches with the barbed wire on top there. Got his rifle with a bayonet on it and a grenade in hand. And then we have this sort of star type structure there on the bottom with the Statue of Liberty on top. So it says this commercial district has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. There's a historical marker up there we'll go check out. So they have a time capsule right near this courthouse and uh, it's to be opened here in a couple years, 2022. Might be interesting to see what they have in there and uh, what they pull out, what kind of condition it's in, and what they tell about. So this is the Lafayette County Courthouse. And they go into some of the history here. You can pause it and read it. But I wanted to show you, it says down at the bottom, it says, During the Battle of Lexington, September 18th through the 20th of 1861, a cannonball struck the east column and remains in place. That's pretty interesting. We'll see if we can zoom in here. That cannonball is right up there. Still stuck in there. Isn't that fascinating that it didn't do enough damage that they could keep that in there? You can see that cannonball stuck in there on the left column. And then they have that clock up there. Anytime I see a clock like that, I can't help but think of Back to the Future and save the clock tower. 
And that one could use some saving itself because it's, it's not running. And if you see the two clocks up there, there's one on one side that looks like it says about 310 and the one on right says 334. So it needs a little saving itself, just like Back to the Future. So they have another sign here talking about the history of Lexington and it says down at the bottom that that cannonball embedded in the courthouse column as a relic of the Confederate victory in 1861, the Battle of Lexington. Quite a bit is listed here. It even says C on the other side. And it says in 1861, Lexington was early regarded as a strategic military prize and was occupied by the Union troops to prevent the State Guard forces north and south of the Missouri River from uniting. Pretty interesting history right there. Not exactly sure what this structure is, and it might have told on that sign, and I just didn't read it, but it's interesting how it has three little indentions in it. I don't know. It might be kind of hard to see because the sun's back behind there, but I got curious as to what the clock said on this side, and it says 340. So, so far, all three clocks say a different time. I know it's pretty difficult to see, but curiosity had me going. This fourth clock, so there's a clock on all four sides. It looks like it says 10.03 up there. Save the clock tower. Right on the corner of this courthouse grounds is a little memorial talking about the National Pony Express Centennial Association. 1860 to 61 and 1960 to 61 and it's talking about the history of the Pony Express right here how it started up in St. Joseph Missouri and I know they have a museum that's up there pretty interesting though love it to see towns embrace their history this monument is saying it's the Madonna of the Trail monument and it was designed by August Lombach of St. Louis, and the statue was unveiled and dedicated September 17, 1928, by the Missouri State Society of Daughters of the American Revolution in memory of the brave pioneer woman who helped settle the West. Pretty interesting picture there. She's got a baby in her arm and child on the right-hand side. And they also have the Potawatomi Trail of Death sign over there. So they are also notating in this sign the Santa Fe Trail as well. A lot of history in this little town to discover and go through. So since we were in downtown Lexington and I saw a little bit on the Pony Express, I decided to look that up and see if anyone notable was buried in the local cemetery. Turns out there is. This is a pretty good sized cemetery with a lot of old historic grave markers. It's really an interesting cemetery as it sits on this hill in here. And there are a lot of broken markers, but you can really see that they are working trying to restore this. There's those old crows up in that tree. Love the iron fence work in here and the large, tall monuments. A lot of different looking ones, very old. As you can see, some of these are 1853, 1861 is when those died. And these are all new bases. Like I said, they are uh, placing them back in there, probably documenting them. If anyone's from here. Please leave a comment if you know anything about that effort. I'm sure there are some other interesting people. This is the kind of thing that I would love to live near. Because I would bet that there are endless stories to tell in this cemetery. Look at this 
big old cedar tree pretty common for them to mark the corners of family plot areas and it's kind of sort of pushed that fence apart maybe a branch or two or something has fallen at one point in time and busted up this fence area a lot of large markers you can see where that one's busted up there Look at the little entrance right over here, if you can see that. I could spend hours on here. Now there are quite a few old markers in here, and I'm sure a lot of them are from the Civil War. It's interesting to see these all broken like this. But I do think they are in the middle of a restoration effort, and I say that because these right here are old markers and they have new bases, and I see some flags on it like they've just done these. Might have been last summer or in the fall or something. So it does appear that they are working to restore these because I see a lot of flags and a lot of bases that are new, so that's that's great to see look at this fence right here it's very ornate and if you follow the channel you know i love these old iron fences this has some growth on it as i get up close there's a crow over there adding to the ambiance but look at the growth on there it's very interesting So the uh, fence is broken right over here. I'm sure they're going to repair that too. There's a gate right over there. But this is two crows over there. Right up in that tree over there. But this is the Waddell section here. And it is quite a large section. Spans the sum over through here. And then of course up through here different areas. But... The one I wanted to show you that has to do with the Pony Express is right up over here. They actually have a little marker here. It's very easy to find. National Pony Express Centennial Association and they have Russell, Majors, and Waddell, founders and owner operators of the Pony Express. And of course it goes from St. Joseph Missouri to Sacramento pretty interesting but this is his memorial marker right here William Waddell born October 14th 1807 and died April 7th 1872 so on the back side of that marker they have this little placard which is showing the Pony Express and the trail from St. Joseph to Fort Laramie and then you see that rider in the middle to Salt Lake City, Utah, and then Sacramento, California. And it says that this is to honor William Bradford Waddell. He was a member of the firm of Russell, Majors, and Waddell, founders, owners, and operators of the Pony Express, and this marks his grave. Born on October 17, 1807 in Virginia to parents of Scottish descent. He lived in Illinois and Kentucky, but eventually settled in Lexington, Missouri in 1835. There he opened a dry goods store on the waterfront near Jack's Ferry. In 1837, he joined William Hepburn Russell and others in creating the Lexington's first edition company, the Lexington Fire and Marine Insurance Company, and the Lexington Female Collegiate Institute. He also built a brick, stone, and hemp warehouse. Waddell's first experience with the freighting business came in his partnership with Russell. In 1853, they created Waddell and Russell, which was a trading firm. Later that year, they hauled military supplies by wagon train to Fort Riley, Kansas and Fort Union, New Mexico. The firm was able to obtain a contract the following year. Waddell and Russell brought in a new partner, Alexander Majors, on January 1, 1855, and the new firm of Russell, Majors, and Waddell was created. The firm obtained a consolidated contract with the War Department to supply the majority of the forts west of the Mississippi River. 
The firm started a stagecoach company, the Central Overland California and Pikes Peak Express Company, in hopes of receiving a mail contract from Missouri to California. Under charter from the Kansas legislature, they started a mail business called the Pony Express, which began operations on April 3, 1860. Waddell supervised business activities of the office from the headquarters of the firm in Lexington, Missouri, and later Leavenworth, Kansas. The Pony Express would prove to be a failure, losing upwards of $1,000 a day. By October of 1861, the Express was put out of business due to the completion of the telegraph lines and the unwillingness of the government to provide further funding. Following the failure of the Pony Express in 1861 and a financial scandal created by Russell, Waddell retired to his home in Lexington and never entered business again. He acquired the Waddell House in 1869. However, his life was not peaceful. The effects of the Civil War were personally felt when one of his sons was killed defending a slave. Additionally, his home was raided multiple times where he was forced to sign an oath of allegiance to the United States. Due to taxes and debts he had incurred, he was required to sell his land. So I am now in the Union City Cemetery, which is in Kansas City, Missouri. And this is the final resting place for Alexander Majors. Now he was one of the members of the firm of Russell Majors and Waddell, one of the founding owners and operators of the Pony Express. And this is his final resting place as well as his wife, Catherine Stalkup. Alexander Majors was born on October 4th, 1814 and died on January 13th, 1900. His wife was born on September 26, 1820 and died on February 13th, 1856. So he lived quite a ways after his wife passed on. But this uh, is designating one of the founders of the Pony Express. And uh, then on the little marker there, it's the same as the other one. It has where it starts out in St. Joseph, Missouri, and then goes all the way out to Sacramento, California. And uh, it ran from 1860 to 1861. And then they commemorated this for the 100 year anniversary of that from 1960 to 61. Alexander Majors was born on October 4, 1814 in Franklin, Kentucky. In 1848, he started hauling overland freight on the Santa Fe Trail. On his first trip, he set a new time record of 92 days for the 1,564-mile round trip. On the Missouri side of the state line at 81st Street, Majors built his two-story frame farmhouse in 1855. It is now operated as a museum. Their wagon trains loaded with goods from his warehouse down the river headed west. Major's Overland Stage Company was part of a wide network that reached into the frontier west. He provided rail ties to the crews of the Union Pacific Railroad working on the first transcontinental railroad. After the railroad was completed, he continued to haul freight to the towns not yet served by the railroad. In Westport, Major's operated a meat packing plant. It supplied the trains with cured pork, soap, and candles. Eventually, he employed 4,000 men, including a 15-year-old lad named Billy Cody, later known as Buffalo Bill Cody, and it became one of his most famous Pony Express riders. Fifteen years later, it was all over. Eventually, the telegraph killed the Pony Express, and the great iron horse killed his freighting and stagecoach operations. By 1865, Majors sold out of what little remained and moved to Colorado. There, 30 years later, his former young wagon master and Pony Express rider, Buffalo Bill Cody, found him. He was old, ill, and penniless. Cody helped him, taking Majors on as part of the Cody Wild West show. Majors lived at Cody's Scout Rest Ranch in North Platte, Nebraska for a time. Majors died in Chicago on January 13, 1900 at the age of 85 and is buried in Union Cemetery in Kansas City, Missouri. William Hepburn Russell's final resting place is in Palmyra, Missouri at the Greenwood Cemetery. He was born in Burlington, Vermont on January 31, 1812. 
In the early 1920s, he moved to western Missouri with his family. By the late 1820s, he worked in a general store and learned the wholesale business working in a firm in 1830. In 1852, he partnered with Waddell to form the mercantile firm, and by 1854, they were freighting military supplies to Santa Fe. Russell lived a lot of his life out west, but he was really at home in the east in big cities. He worked his magic in Washington, D.C., securing government contracts for his new firm. In 1860, Russell was involved in a bond scandal, which was through a series of illegal transactions from the Indian Trust Fund. The outbreak of the Civil War saved him from prosecution, and he was freed on a technicality. The bond scandal did ruin the firm's reputation of Russell, Majors, and Waddell, and the freight firm soon collapsed into bankruptcy. Following the collapse of the firm, he was deep in debt. He tried to regain his fortunes in Colorado doing gold mining, but that soon failed. His assets were sold in April of 1865 to pay off creditors. He then tried his hand brokering in New York, which that also failed. Due to failing health, he returned to Missouri to live with his son, where he died on September 10, 1872, at the age of 60. So this was just a quick video, but I wanted to show it. How often do you see a cannonball still stuck in a building? I know there's a few places across the south that have that, but this is in the county courthouse. And they've embraced it, left it there, memorialized it. Pretty fascinating. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. So this is a fascinating cemetery and hopefully I didn't butcher the name of it, but I could spend a lot of time in this cemetery just researching some of the names, telling the stories, and I would love to do some of that today, but my time in Missouri is limited, so we're going to move on down the road.